entering the Sebastian Inlet State Park. Lisa and I have rode over here. There's supposedly a museum over here that we want to go to. So we've got to see what and where. We're unsure of where it's at. We're on uh, A1A headed south between Melbourne Beach and uh, the Sebastian area. Hello. 
we are looking for that uh, museum. Is it down this way? No, which museum? We have a fishing museum, we have a treasure museum. Treasure museum. That's going to be back out to you and make a right. You can drive over the bridge about a mile, maybe maybe slightly further on the left hand side is McCarty Treasure Museum. Okay. Can we loop here? Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Well, we're not at the right place here either. We are going to go back out. We're going to go a little further south. We're looking for the treasure museum. So we will make our way out and go look for it. Clardy Treasury Museum. And I am going in the exit, as I can see after I make the turn. We're going to get to this place yet. It may be closing, but we're going to get there. And here we are. At the McCarty Treasury Museum. Oh, you got your treasure. Got my treasure. is the site of the survivors and salvagers camp the 17th and 15th fleet
of systematic recovery and study of material evidence of past human life and cultures. The study of these artifacts explores the lives of the people who used them. The place where you are presently standing has been inhabited intermittently for more than 3,000 years. During this time, various cultures have come and gone. Remnants of these cultures have been unearthed at this site at various depths. At the deepest level, relics of the Paleo Hunters were found. Above the Paleo Hunters, remnants of their possible descendants, the Ice Indians, were discovered. Above that, archaeologists found artifacts from the Spanish survivors and salvagers camp. And on the surface, they found the remains of modern inhabitants. Archaeologists recovered the items before you during excavations done in the mid-20th century. Kip Wagner's accidental discovery of Spanish silver coins at this site led to the rediscovery of the 1715 Spanish treasure fleet. This was quite a surprise, since the wreckage of the 1715 fleet had basically been lost in history. After searching for more Spanish treasure on land, Wagner and his friends, who later formed the Real Eight Company Corporation, took their search into the Atlantic Ocean. Marine archaeology is the study of the past through underwater sites. With the advent of the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, underwater exploration is The majority of treasure hunting is done with monetary gain. Searching for riches, treasure hunters have uncovered vast quantities of artifacts. Private enterprises, under the guidance of the state of Florida, have located most of the ships lost in the hurricane of 1715. The wooden remains of these ships are almost non-existent. The following is a fictitious letter, factual in content only. My dearest Teresa de la Castellana, having no idea how I am to transport this letter, I am writing to you only to relieve some of the deep sorrow in my heart. Let me begin by explaining how I came to be in this place of such turmoil. After much delay due to the late arrival of General Don Juan Esteban de Uvilla's four vessels from Veracruz, we finally left Havana on July the 24th in the year of our Lord, 1715. The festivals of leaving were magnificent, my dear betrothed. Brightly colored flags flew, cannons roared, and all wished us Godspeed. The weather was also spectacular, with wispy white clouds dancing in a delightfully pale blue sky. The first day out, all was magnificent, for provisions were plentiful and none dreamed of fashion. At night, we sang and played on the same part, with all forms of camera. I awoke the second day with wild experiences. region south of Cape Canaveral to the St. Lucie River as far as 20 to 30 miles inland. The Ice Indians are thought to be descendants of paleo hunters who lived in the area 5 to 10,000 years ago. During this time the giant sloth roamed the area. This large vegetarian mammal stood 13 feet tall and weighed 3 to 5 tons. Little is known of the Ice Indians since documentation is scarce. We do know that they were non-agricultural meaning they were hunters and gatherers, not farmers. They lived off the land. Their diet consisted mainly of food from the surrounding waters, including sea turtles, shellfish, kingfish, bluefish, wallet, brum, and other fish. They also ate bear, raccoon, and native berries, such as palm berries, cocoa plums, and sea grapes. Palm berries were stored for times when they were scarce.
six pound cannonball. Musket balls. <laughs> many images in people's minds, especially gold. However, only 5% of the rare metal systems in the world are exactly gold, and the majority of these silver.
severe hurricane sank 11 Spanish treasure ships along the east coast of Florida. Remnants of the ships are still being found from Cape Canaveral southward to St. Lucie Inlet. This treasure fleet, like many before, was transporting riches of the New World back to Spain. The acquisition of these riches was largely responsible for Spain's rise to world power. The story of this treasure fleet originates with the royal decree of King Philip V, the year 1712. Two fleets were dispatched to the New World. One fleet, the Galleons, sailed to present-day South America, where they loaded gold and silver that had been transported from as far away as present-day Bolivia. Valuable goods from Central and South America were also transported back to Spain. They brought chincona bark, used to treat malaria, indigo, a deep blue dye obtained from various plants, cochineal, a red dye made from the dried bodies of cochineal insects, also a medicine as per kit making ingredient, and cacao beans, used in making chocolate. The second fleet, the Flota, sailed to present-day Mexico, where they loaded not only gold and silver, but a variety of goods from as far away as the Orient. These goods held enough value to be transported halfway around the world to Spain. They brought silk for clothing, porcelain tableware, sandalwood for carvings and cabinet making, sassafras for flavoring, perfume, and medicinal uses, and nutmeg, peppercorns, vanilla beans, and cinnamon for flavor. Yeah, I would too. We are headed out on the boardwalk out of the museum here. It's just out and overlooks the ocean. Does that tell what it is? Well, it's kind of a vine, you know. If you look at it, the way it comes out, out of the ground. See, I think here's where the fruits were. Yeah.
I don't guess this is a bad way to end this video and uh, this trip to this museum is what we're looking at right here.